Helped set up a field goal for a 20-point New York Jets lead at the half. Now we go to the second half. Manning guided the Colts into the end zone, found Marvin Harrison, cut the Jets' lead in half. Jets appeared to be headed for the clincher, but Vinny was intercepted for the 19th time this season. David Macklin, the rookie, got the pick, and the Colts, who looked woefully out of it, were back in business. They made the Jets pay for the mistake. Manning to Terrence Wilkins in stride. The 20-point lead had dwindled to three. With five minutes to go, Colts looked like they had a chance to possibly go in front, but they fumbled the snap, and Brian Cox was there to recover. Curtis Martin iced it after that. His two-yard run made the scoreboard 27 for New York, 17 for Indianapolis. So it came down to this. With a couple of minutes left, Manning trying to rally his troops, couldn't. Nick Ferguson picked him off. The Jets had the game 27 to 17. And for me, the storyline starts and ends with number 28, 30 runs, 203 yards. What a game for a guy who was coming off a painful injury. If we don't continue to do what we did today, then it don't mean nothing. So, you know, we're not going to have the day off tomorrow. We're going to come in. We're going to continue to work hard because we realize that this is just the start of getting to where we want to be. Uh, I thought our guys really came to play. I give a lot of credit to the players uh, for their efforts to get ready to play. You know, we just put ourselves one step closer to the playoffs, and, uh, you know, we got a big, another big game next week with Oakland, so we had to win this game. It was a must-win for us, and we, we came out and got it done. Pitch for Martin, left side. Cuts it back. Running room. For myself, it's almost as if my body, my mind, just draws me to where there's an opening. You know, even when it feels like there's no opening in my mind, I know that I can find one. That's what it feels like, I believe, when a running back gets in the zone. I felt a lot better this week, uh, and, you know, just mentally, uh, after what happened to us last week. I mean, when we had 20, 29 yards or something like that, you know, it was embarrassing. Curtis did a tremendous job today, and I've referred to him as one of the guys on our team that carries the flag, and, and there's something special about that guy. He picks up the blitz well. We all know he's a good runner. See Curtis come back off of being injured uh, a few weeks ago and, and run the way he did is outstanding. He's one of the most uh, mentally tough players I've been around in my career. Curtis does a great job of making guys miss and, um, and you know, on his cuts and stuff like that. He's got great vision. He sees sideline to sideline, it's peripheral, and, and he knows when guys are coming. And, um, and he does a great job of making moves and, and making guys have to really fight really hard to bring him down. And um, I mean, he's just a great running back all together. At the Meadowlands, where a hard-fought battle is going to come out in favor of the New York Jets, thanks in large part to Curtis Martin, who has rushed for a team record 203 yards today. You can't say enough about Curtis, man. I mean, 200-yard rushing, you know, coming off an injury, you know, and still kind of injured, banged up a little bit. You know, that judge just keep going like a Duracell battery, man. I tell you. <laughs> up next, the Giants. Jim Fossil's guarantee that his team's going to make the playoffs. Sure looks to be right on the money. The Giants went down to Washington with a will to win, and they did that. Yeah, we did it, man. man. Against all odds, and we won the big one. Everybody back in New York. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah, baby! Nah, champion Yankees have an unfair advantage in baseball because they spend the most money. Well, I offer up the Washington Redskins. The Skins have the biggest payroll in football, and right now, they are on life support in the NFL playoff race. The Giants went down to Washington today and put an old-fashioned New York Giant hurt on the high-priced Redskins. The Giants' offense was able to move the ball against Washington but had trouble holding on to the football. Three turnovers kept them out of the end zone. Joe Juravicius was hit from behind by Darrell Green. That was one of three Giants' turnovers on the afternoon. Giants did have good success running the ball. Tiki Barber helped set up the second field goal with that run. Tiki averaged just under six yards a carry. He also accumulated over 100 yards of offense running and catching the football. Barber by far the best offensive player on the field for Big Blue. Giants led by six at the half. Washington quarterback Brad Johnson was roughed up by the Giants' D. Emmanuel McDaniel hit him. And that enabled Sam Garns to come up with the interception. Giants put the wood to Washington all game long. Sean Williams knocked the ball loose with that big dime hit. Brad Johnson was a bust in his return to the starting quarterback job. Emmanuel McDaniel got that pick, and the Skins pulled Johnson after that. Exit Johnson, enter Jeff George after that calmed down. He came on to try and save the day, 
and George was almost able to pull it off. George threw to James Thrash, and he took it all the way down to the five, and the Washington fans, who had been quiet all game long, whooped it up. George followed that, rolled out, got away from the rush, and looked for the old pro in the end zone, Irving Fryer, pulled Washington within two points of Big Blue. Giants tried to run out the clock, but they couldn't. Sam Shea stopped Tiki Barber, and so the Skins got the ball back. Washington attempted to get within field goal range, and it appeared they had when George threw to Thrash. They called it a catch at the 19-yard line, but the officials up in the booth overruled. The call said no catch. So Washington was forced to try this 49-yard game-winning field goal, but the 44-year-old Eddie Murray was short, and the Giants celebrated their 9-7 win. Big Blues now tied for first in the NFC East, and they have almost all the playoff tiebreakers in their favor. What do the Giants have to say after their biggest win of the season? I've been at this a long time, and uh, I don't think I've ever gone anywhere with a group of guys that had more determination and, and belief factor in this game, and I think that was without a doubt. Uh, I'm extremely proud of the effort and the positive energy that this team put out. Um, I mean, we, we, we've, we've taken a tremendous amount of pride in fighting our way right on down the wire here, and I'm proud of these guys. I mean, they, they gave me everything they had, and they kept believing. That was, that was huge. And, um, I mean, we, it's not over. Uh, this, this isn't the ending. This is just the beginning. This afternoon, Big Blue earned their nickname, especially on defense. The Giants came out flying, constantly harassing Washington quarterback Brad Johnson. Johnson was under constant pressure. Big Blue came at him from all angles. We got to give Coach John Fox a lot of credit, you know. Uh, you know, we got to give him all the credit because uh, he put us in good positions and uh, we went against a good team today. What was it that you were able to do against Johnson there? Well, I'll tell you one thing about it. We came in, put a lot of pressure on him, you know, and, uh, you know, made him uh, make some bad throws and got hit a lot, you know. Anytime quarterback you hit that many times, you're bound to make some mistakes. Well, that's Coach Fox. I mean, he has a history of coming after uh, a quarterback, an offense, when things aren't even going right. And things were going right for, for a long time. And it doesn't matter. I mean, that's just how he calls a game. Did you like the fact that uh, Coach Fox had such an aggressive play calling scheme today? Oh, yeah, he, uh, I love that. You know, blitzing the quarterback, getting in there, making, uh, making things tough. Uh, you know, that's the way you have to be against a team as good as Washington. Despite their spectacular performance, the Giants still had to sweat out the final few moments. And when Eddie Murray missed what could have been the game winning field goal, relief was overcome on the Giants sideline. Well, this was nice. This was nice to come out here. You know, um, it just, it's great for our coach. It's great for our team. It's great for everybody around here. Just coming to Washington. We haven't won in a while. There's been a lot of talk about that to come out here and just and to beat them the way we did. Boy, that's a hug you'll take any day of the week, isn't it? Any day of the week, man. I mean, to come down here, beat them. First time we've beaten them in a couple of years. And to do it the way we did it, that last kick. Well, that was almost a heart attack waiting to happen for me. We knew it won't be rough. It won't be no easy task coming off into this stadium, you know, uh, and getting a win. We knew it won't be rough, and it came out to the wire. It's great. I mean, we, it was a must-win for us. We needed it, and it just brought us that much closer together. We were tired of hearing, uh, you know, about uh, when we never won a big game. So today, I guess we silenced them pretty. This team let it all in, everything they had. I mean, I, they can't give anymore. Yeah, we did it, man. man. Against all odds, and we won the big one. Everybody back in New York. Yeah, baby! So the Giants won a football game that no one really gave them a chance to. And combined with the Philadelphia Eagles loss to Tennessee, the Giants are now atop the NFC East and control their own destiny. In Landover, Maryland, I'm Carl Reuter for Sports Extra. Getting upset by GW yesterday, they can take some consolation in a 14-point win over Michigan. 97-83, Anthony Glover led the way with a season-high 27 for the Red Storm against a young Michigan team. Glover puts them up 42-41. They had trailed by as many as 11 in the first half. So a second-half comeback was key. The freshman, Willie Shaw, had 19, and St. John's goes on to win it by 14. Shaw had five three-pointers on the day. Vivid. Yesterday's embarrassing steal found net, scored at the buzzer, and St. John's was in front at the break. Jesse with 19. In the second half, turnovers killed Michigan. Sharif Fordham stole the ball, scored. St. John's pulled away from Michigan, and they won it 97 83. Hey, the Rangers are in the midst of a. It's all the ball. Wow. That 
one I did not understand at all. It would take you 10 seconds to unpile them if you got the first one. Well, Jim Fossil, in 1990, he managed to win one. One, when they were down by 12 or more. In the year 2000, he starts it out well. Well, I'll tell you, this defense for the well, Giants has been just, I mean, the entire night. They've made a, a few mistakes on, on holding penalties and, and a pass interference penalty. But other than that, this defense has been solid. The New York Giants dominated most of the night, have come from behind to beat the Dallas Cowboys, and they win the NFC East if they win next week, they got home field all home the way through. Field through the playoffs. It's an amazing story. And Jim Fossil has to be regarded in New York as a genius. Okay, the guys in New York need you right now. They they absolutely are dealing with a bulletproof individual. And why not? You absolutely. make that guarantee you win four straight, win your division, you're on the verge of home field throughout the playoffs. You couldn't ask for anything more. Jim Fossil is on a roll. Oh, we finally have somebody to win a division. Absolutely. <laughs> the first one. Uh, he, you know, he started from the beginning with this football team and set the pace, made him into a team. Michael Strahan made the comment. He said, this football team is truly a team. The defense gets up and cheers for the offense. It's just really, really something to watch. Now can they play with the big boys? A testament for the New York Giants, the way they were dominated tonight and came back. The final score, the Giants 17, the Cowboys 13. Sports Center's next. All the news, scores, and highlights. For Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Solomon Wilcox, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Irving, Texas. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. with Amani Toomer. Touchdown, 33 yards, 13-7 ball game. That's your score in the fourth quarter. Third and nine for the Cowboys. Eight and a half to go right. Picked by Emmanuel McDaniel. And the man who coordinates the defense is loving. John Fox excited because the next play, Tiki Barber. I believe he's the lightning in the thunder and lightning. 13-yard touchdown, 14-13 Giants. Less than a minute to go. Michael Wiley stuffed by Jesse Armstead. And the Giants bust out the Gatorade. They are the winners of the NFC East, outscoring the Cowboys 17 to nothing after halftime to win for the fourth straight time and the eighth time in 10 games. They clinched their first division title since 1997, which is also, by the way, the last time Dallas lost 10 times in a season. Tune in the streets tonight, Vince. The Giants are the NFC Eastern Conference champions in Dallas. The Giants came from 13 back in the second half. They beat the Cowboys. It just finished 17-13 in the final first half. All Dallas. Here's Emmett Smith dashing in from a yard out. Dallas was in control. Giants finally did get on the board late third quarter. It's Kerry Collins. 33 yards to Amani Toomer. It was 13-7. Then fourth quarter, it's Emmanuel McDaniel and the defense coming up huge here in intercepting the rookie Anthony Wright and this would lead to the winning touchdown it is Tiki Barber our good friend Tiki Barber very next play and look at the speed to the outside turns the corner he's in 14 13 Giants Michael Strahan would then ice it as he would get to the quarterback Strahan a big night he had two sacks that is just Serious power. Del Wiso, a field goal to make it 17 13. And then after Strahan finished showing off, it was time for the cool down shower for Jim Fossil. His guarantee comes to fruition. What a moment for Fossil. Again, the Giants win it 17 13. If the Giants win next Sunday against Jacksonville, they will own the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Now, the big question is tonight what has happened to the Jets? Suddenly, they're posting. I know there's a lot of tradition that goes with this team defense. You know, guys, you know, that set the. Set basically set the, the trend of how to play defense. You got to play hard and have the attitude they had, didn't back down from nobody. And that was the attitude around them. We got to keep that attitude. You got to realize who set the foundation for you and what's expected of you here. And on this team, it's defense. Last week, you faced Donovan McNatt who did an outstanding job, a difficult guy to contain. This week, you see a similar guy, only he's essentially me. Do you play him any differently? Um, 
Or you as concerned. You really have to play him just about the same way, except for it's going to be a lot harder to take him down. Plain and simple, this guy is, he's 270 pound, pounds. I weighed in at 268 this morning. So this, I'm like, it's like hitting, hitting myself, or like you say, hitting you. So for us, it's going to have to be not one guy hitting him, not two guys hitting him. We need three guys hitting him. Many people feel that this is the style of offense that gives this defense the most problems. And they point directly to the secondary. The receivers do such a phenomenal job of competing for the football, but a lot of times, and it's no discredit to anybody who's a small corner, but, you know, 5'10", 5'9", is tough when they're 6'4", and 6'3". I mean, at least with us, we might be able to get our hands in the way a little bit more. How much film have you looked at of Randy Moss? A lot. A lot of film. A ton. Yeah. You have to realize where he's at at all times. You know, you have to focus on where he's at. And, uh, you know, you see the ball thrown to him, you make sure you have to get there in a hurry. Do you look to blow him up or do you look to play the ball? Well, I think you can't be conservative playing against him. You've got to tell me in your mind that you would like for nothing more <laughs> than to make that big blow up hit on Randy Moss. You know, it would be nice. You know, uh, Just nice, huh? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'd enjoy it, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm on the boys back in cars. So <laughs> well, definitely, you know, I, I guess I got to go with my boys and definitely I would love to get a big hit on them. There's no question about yeah. that. I'll tell you one thing. Whoever walk away from that game don't have to earn it. Let's rock and roll, D. And Dan throws. And the pass is almost picked up. It is picked up. Seahorn came up with it. Jason Seahorn is going to take it in. All you hear about is Tampa Bay, Baltimore. Tennessee. Uh, you don't hear about this defense. You know, uh, we got a chip on our shoulders because we're not getting the respect we deserve. But how you earn respect, you go take respect. Do you roll out of bed angry? No, I wake up every day angry. You know, I, 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 you know, I get that feeling about you. Oh yeah, I'm getting, I'm kind of right now thinking oh, yeah. about the whole situation. You know, Good. but uh, you know, I say that for Sunday. You know what I mean? as you look at Bob Tish. Hey, Pat and John, the sound you hear is a, a sound of the team that just made it to the Super Bowl. They've even got the sideline reporter a hat. I mean, this is getting good down here. You know, I talked to Jesse Armstead yesterday. He said no matter what they've done this year, they can't get the respect they deserve. He said sometimes if they don't give it to you, you just got to go out and take it. They went here and took it today. Back up to you, Pat. All right, you better get that hat cut down in size a little bit. You know, Lomas Brown was standing right behind him, and when he got off camera, Lomas was going to take it back. I guarantee you he didn't let DJ keep that cap. Timeout call, I'm not sure by home. 41 to nothing. Already got a phone call. There is Wellington Mara and his wife Ann next to him. He asked me one day how many grandchildren I had, and I told him, and he said, You're a piker. I've got 40. How many do you have? Nine. You had nine, and that was nothing. As a piker. Rock is running down, and Fossil goes to the top of the shoulder. You've been through that, John. And you and I have been through 20 years. Yep. Those are 20 great years, and this is a great feeling right here. And, and now, now we're going to have the crowning because the, the Giants won the NFC Championship today, and we're going to have the presentation out on the field. So don't go away. They'll be setting up a platform in the middle of the field, and I'd imagine that most of these fans will stay right where they are, and they have. Well, these are great fans. I mean, yeah. they... They waited and they're and this is the last game they're going to have here and they enjoy this team. They enjoy the football. As you said they were here when we got here this morning Kieran and they aren't going to leave. There's no one's going to leave. If you wait this long and then you get a championship and you love your team you don't leave before they get their trophy. I'll tell you what. When you look back at the scores of the two championship games that were played here. Nobody has scored against the Giants in Giants Stadium in championship game. What a job by Jim Fossil and his staff. Was carrying off the head coach. Vote for your favorite Dr. Pepper player of the day and enter the Dr. Pepper big game day sweepstakes by logging on to FoxSports.com. 
Indeed. Jim Fossil deserved it. Once again, the final score is the Giants 41. The Giants, uh, the Vikings, nothing. Up next is the Southwest Airlines postgame show with J.B. Terry, Howie, and Chris. Take it away, J.B. Welcome to the Southwest Airlines postgame show, brought to you by Southwest. Things that they were the real deal. Now the boys in blue are Super Bowl bound. Good evening, I'm Harry Martin. And I'm Patricia Wu in for Cynthia Santana. The Giants are the NFC champs. And boy, did they put on a show at the Meadowlands. Tom McDonald was at Giants Stadium for all of the action. He is with us now. Tom. I'll tell you, I still can't believe. I looked up at the scoreboard and saw 41 to nothing. I'm going, is this real? I'll tell you, the Giants overwhelmed the Minnesota Vikings. One in a route by that score, 41 to nothing. That means that Big Blue will play the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. The Vikings came to town as the favorites, but were never in the game. Total domination by the New York football giants. Kerry Collins, the game of his life. First time Big Blue touched the ball, marched him downfield, threw a TD strike to Ike Hilliard. Five touchdown passes, tying an NFL record. On the defensive side of the ball, New York shut down Minnesota's offense. Sam Garns out of DeWitt, Clinton High in the Bronx, helped keep the favorite Vikings off the scoreboard. When it was over, two guys who grew up in our area were celebrating the Giants' victory. And as a New York guy, uh, when you walk the streets, people say to you, what, being a football giant? Uh, the good thing about I love it, they just don't talk about me being from the Bronx. They talk about me playing good football, and that's, that's what it's about, you know. Uh, a lot of people do shout out Bronx, baby. It's, I'm, I'm happy just to be you know, known as a good football player. Growing up here in Jersey and then, uh, you know, having the opportunity to, you know, come back here after college and play, I mean, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. We used to call it the show when the LT was here and I was covering him and Otis Anderson. What do they refer to the Super Bowl as these days? The dance, the show, whatever you want to call it, we're going. Whatever they want to call it, the Giants are in the Super Bowl. Sports Extra will have the entire Giants story right after the Knicks caught a big break today. Shaq. They played some Big East basketball at the Garden tonight. They also honored the man who helped bring Big East basketball into national prominence. Yeah. Legendary St. John's coach Lou Carnesecca and Louie had some special company tonight. Hey. President Clinton acknowledged the man who started coaching basketball when the old Garden was around. They look a freebie too there. But Louie made his name as the coach at St. John's. 526 wins later, Willis Reed stood beside Louie to watch the Carnesecca banner go up in the Garden rafters right along with his. Reed. As a 76-year-old Hall of Famer, Lou Carnesecca became the first collegiate figure to be recognized at the Garden. So many things happen here because this arena is the greatest arena in the world. And I'm not going to stop there. It's in the greatest city in the world. And it has the greatest fans in the world. Let's go win. All right. Imagine the pressure for St. John's coach Mike Jarvis. You got to win on Luke Carn's second to. night versus UConn. Whoa, the dish by Omar Cook to, Cook to Donald Emmanuel. Two point lead for St. John's. Moments later, he drove for two of his 17 points. Omar Cook all night long with the steal when UConn had a chance to tie it. Reggie Jesse finishes him off. UConn goes down to St. John's 60 to 55. The Knicks had the night off, but the brass was working on a trade. The Knicks are sending reserve point guard Eric Strickland plus two draft choices to the Vancouver Grizzlies. And here's what they get in return. Six foot nine forward Othella Harrington. He has averaged 11 points and nearly seven rebounds per game this season. So the Knicks fortify their front court tonight with Othella Harrington. Meanwhile, a panel of NBA coaches has named the reserves for the... sounds all around a big smile from Patrick Ewing and it looks as though Nick fans have come to salute the man who starred here for 15 seasons forgetting the fact that he didn't win the championship simply remembering that every time he stepped onto the floor every time the Knicks began a season it was a night or it was a year of hope 
that great things would come. Clyde, uh, you know, I don't know how much you've seen Patrick Ewing this year with Seattle, but it's a totally different role as we've talked about. But you got to figure Gary Payton first few times down the floor gets him the ball, don't you? Yeah, that's always the scenario. When I was with Cleveland, all my teammates said, Clyde, bust him tonight, man. So they featured me early on in the game, and that will happen for Ewing. But I think right now this game is going to be anticlimactic for Ewing. He played 38 minutes last night, had to sit up with his father who's ill. I don't think he has anything left. And uh, obviously, Canby is much quicker, and Canby can intimidate Patrick, so I don't see Ewing having a big game tonight. Yeah, we've talked about Ewing's adrenaline. You know Canby's is flowing, too. When we come back, a musical tribute to 15 years of Ewing as a Nick. Garden, a rousing welcome back for Patrick Ewing. Hugs for Kurt Thomas, Latrell Sprewell, and Alan Houston, and a huge, big smile. Patrick Ewing is back, and some of the images that he leaves us with as a Nick require no words. Lyle Lovett does that as an old friend. Make you still look a lot like me. Feel about him, and they'll do it again in a few minutes. This advertised a one-minute video honoring the New York Nick career of Patrick Ewing, followed by the introduction of the lineups. Why this sounds more like a hockey crowd tonight, yeah, chanting yeah. Ewing's name and uh, during the course of the national anthem, people also calling out for Patrick Ewing. Let's join Mike Moshevsky. The world's the most famous arena. Tonight's game features the Seattle Supersonics and your New York Knicks. And the Knicks in Madison Square Garden are proud to have an all-time great with us this evening. And we direct your attention to Garden Vision as we welcome back our number 33, Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> 